try to butcher the solo. What? I should have stopped when I was ahead, huh? Okay, so now I gotta tell a story to make it up. Damn it! What's your story for tonight? Uh, well, one he said I should have emphasized that I saw Peter Chris, fake Peter Chris, playing at Magic Mountain, and Kiss didn't even know. I think Ace knew, but Gene and Paul were oblivious that the roadie was actually sitting back there with a black shirt and Peter Chris's makeup on. And he had not a wig or anything. He just had long kind of hair. And they didn't even, they're just like, whatever, Peter Chris. You know, they turn back there. They see. I, it took me a minute. And my friend that I was with, Jim Gardner, he's like, dude, that's not Peter Chris. I'm like, what? He's like, that's not Peter Chris. I'm looking. I'm like, he's not wearing his clothes, his bandolero thingies and all that crap. I'm like, what did he do? That's, that isn't him. Because I thought, wow, he must have <laughs> done something like drink a diet or like a drink a Pepsi or something, you know, because I was 12 or whatever, 13. Because now he's playing great. 13 I was. And uh, it wasn't because it was him. It was because it was his roadie. And so they did two shows. They did the one where the cameras are all over the place and we were singing uh, Rip and Destroy. We did do that. I remember it was just a group of us in the front, and we all had, we were all saying "rip" and "destroy" and like, yeah, yeah, we did that. I remember doing it. I read somebody that's like, "Oh no, that wasn't." Yeah, we did. If you were there early enough, you did all of that crap. They had us do several things. I thought for sure the camera was right on me. It was on this grandma and a baby that was with her son or something or grandson and behind her was me and my dad and my friend Jim and uh, they shot her which I'm like they're not going to use that and then they shot me and my friend and I'm like we're in the movie we're going to be in and so when you see this like old lady and a baby or something and then it flashes to us and it's gone it's so fast that you can barely i can see it because i've gone through it and stopped it at every frame and i could see me for a second but hey i was there it was very cool magic mountain kiss 78 doing the the movie and when i saw the movie i thought it was friggin' cool i taped it with my little tape deck and I listened to the audio over and over and over again. Even that music that they played, it was typical, you know, you know, uh, evil music, cartoon evil music. Hanna Barbera, they just used the same crap over and over. The guy they got to do Peter Chris's voice because he wouldn't do any of his voice overs. You could tell it was the guy that had done a billion other Hanna Barbera cartoons. It was ridiculous. But when it came out, I loved it. And then I watched it again when I was older, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But uh, yeah, I had a great time. And my, so it was like me, my dad, and uh, my friend Jim. And it was a big thing getting the tickets. This guy at school, his mom worked for Hanna-Barbera. She gave him like 50 tickets and parking passes. You needed both. And she said, give them to your friends. Just give them away because you cannot sell them. So he's selling them for 50 bucks, I think. It was 20 bucks a ticket, which is, you know, 60 bucks to see Kiss at Magic Mountain. So I'm like, I need to take, this is, this is why I went and got a job immediately after I started working at that Michelle's Records. And then Killeen, because I was never going to be put in this spot again. So I'm like, Ma, I need money. Because I knew my dad was going to give it to me. For what? To go see Kiss. You've already seen Kiss. No, they're playing at Magic Mountain. I want to go see him, blah, 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 blah. So she wouldn't give me the money unless she saw the ticket. So I had to bring the tickets home. She saw the ticket, and she saw on the bottom that it was not for resale. And she wouldn't give the ticket back to me or the guy that gave it to me. So, like... 30, 40 kids come up and they're going to kick my ass because I've got the last three tickets. 
So I had to make up a story that my dad was going blind, and this was the last thing he was going to be able to do with me. And then they all, you know, and it's partially true because he had, uh, what do you have, Ma? I know she just walked in. Cataracts. So back in the 70s, you had to get one at a time, and it was a big deal. It was overnight. So, you know, it wasn't as in and out as it was today. So I didn't know, and he didn't know if he was going to lose his eyesight. You know, there was a chance. So I wasn't lying. And, you know, that caused such a big pain in the ass until I got into ninth grade when I was finally six feet tall. I could beat the shit out of everybody. And if anybody brought it up afterwards, I would kill them. But I just, I didn't want to be reminded of it because it was such a pain in the ass. But hey, I went to sock, I went to sock, yes, I'm rising around, and that's all I care about. So there you go. And if you look, Gene Simmons is playing a Thunderbird, black Thunderbird with a, a mirrored uh, pick guard, like I got on my black Thunderbird now. It's the only time he ever played it. A black Gibson Thunderbird with a mirror pick guard. Check it out. Comment, subscribe, like, do all that stuff later. Later.